Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Preaching to the Choir Ministries. Ladies and gentlemen, Preaching to the Choir Ministries is a ministry that is focused on dealing with the lies of the last days. The Bible says that in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. The Bible also says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3, that before the man of sin is revealed, there will be a falling away first. And what this suggests is, is that the church age will end in apostasy. A lot of people who claim they are Christians will not be real Christians. Rather, they would have uh, actually turned their back on God and have, you know, given their ears to myths and fables and listened to the doctrines of demons. In Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 3, the Bible talks about the moral decline that will not just be going on in the world, but will be going on in the church. The Bible says that uh, those people will be lovers of their own selves, both who are proud, rude, disobedient to parents. And we see a lot of that today. It's like reading the newspaper. And this was written about 2,000 years ago. Now, why are people falling away? Why are people leaving Christianity? Are people leaving Christianity because um, they're realizing that God does not exist? That's one reason. There are some people that that are actually saying, oh, you know, I no longer believe that God exists because he's not answering my prayers. There are going to be people who are going to leave Christianity because they think Islam is better. There are going to be people who want to leave Christianity because they don't want to fight and argue. They no longer want to stand with Christ. They get tired of being called names. They won't be persecuted no more. There are going to be people leaving Christ for various reasons in the last days. And I can literally spend a couple of hours talking about this one topic alone. But in this edition of preaching, as a matter of fact, before we get started, uh, I want to talk about my next movie suggestion, which is called Escape from Hell. Now, I don't want you guys thinking every video I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be suggesting movies. But, you know, as I read more and more of the comments out on the comment section, I figure that this would be a good video for many of you to watch. In this particular video, this man that you see here right here he gets depressed in this movie and i believe um he asks the doctor to um to uh to make it possible that he dies and when he dies he goes to hell and i'm not going to tell you the rest I'm, i'll tell you this much he made a very bad decision but uh atheists not christians i highly recommend this movie for you because a lot of you are in for a rude awakening when you die so you think when you die you're gonna let the worms are gonna be eating you when you die you think that's it it's gonna be over you're going to find out that there's a that this life was just temporary and that there is another life and that you will have to stand before jesus christ and you will have to give an account for your life i'm recommend i'm really recommending this movie for atheists but atheists if you're not interested christians i think you'll get a kick out of this movie it's a very good movie uh it's not meant to scare you but it, rather, it should encourage you and uh, strengthen your faith rather than uh, than hurt it. This is a great, 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 great movie about the power of God and what God can do for a man who's suicidal. Now, in this edition of Preaching to the Choir Ministries, we're going to be t we're going to talk about where your heart is. I'd like to read something to you in First John chapter two, starting at verse fifteen. And it says, excuse me, I just got finished eating and I got a little gas. So if you see me doing that, that's what the case is. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. For all that is in the world of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away. And the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Now, some of you might be, some of you who watched my video a few times must be, your jaw must be dropping right now because a lot of times in my video I'm always talking about love. I'm always talking about how God said, "For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in Him would not perish, but have everlasting life." How Jesus, for example, uh, commanded His disciples to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor the way you love yourself. But then in first john chapter 2 verse 15 it says love not the world see here's the thing okay 
In John chapter 3, verse 16, when the Bible says, For God so loved the world, he is talking about his creation. He's talking about man, men, women, the animals, the trees, and everything that he created. Okay? That is why God sent his Jesus Christ to this world, to die for the sins of humanity. See, a lot of the things that you see going on, even down to lions eating other animals, is because, is because of sin. At one time, lions didn't eat other animals. They were eating grass. But because of the fall of man, we see all this murdering and killing going on, even, even in the animal kingdom. Okay? That is how devastating what Adam and Eve did during the garden, in, in, in the garden of Eden. Now, when we get to 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17, what world is this passage of scripture talking about? Okay? Uh, let me see. Um, John simplifies the evil desire and sin so, so much a part of human existence. In verse 17, John has stated that the present evil order of things is passing away. This leads to his affirmation that it is the last time Antichrist appears in the whole New Testament. And it goes into the whole thing about Bible prophecy and whatnot. What I want you guys to understand is that the, 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 this word world is... In First John chapter um, one verses two through seventeen, what it's saying there is, is saying that society, the way the world is, um, the way our governments are run, the governmental systems that are run, we're told not to love the welfare system. We're told not to love the the, the laws of the land. We're told not to love so the the way society the way society is. We're told not to love the world system. Christians are not supposed to love that. We're supposed to love people. We're supposed to love God's creation, not the government system. I want you guys to remember something, that the devil is the God of this world. Let me repeat this. And I want all of you to understand this. I don't want nobody fast forwarding this or nothing. The devil is the God of this world. A lot of the things that you see going on today... It's because of the devil, not because of almighty God. See, God is sovereign and God allows this stuff to happen so that you will turn from your sins. God wants you to see with your own two eyes just how evil this world is. And if God never allowed you to see that, how would you know that you're evil? How would you know that you have a fallen nature? That's why God allows these things to happen um, in this world. So God does not want you to love the things that's going on in this world. The things that's going on in this world opposes God. And his nature. Now, God wants you to see this, and God wants you to love people. He doesn't want you to love the actual world. In fact, um, the Bible says, um, "Do not conform to, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that God will change the way you think, and you will see how good and perfect God's will really, really is." This is found in Romans chapter twelve. Uh, I believe verse uh, two. OK, God doesn't want you thinking like the rest of the world. He doesn't want you to be conformed to the pattern of this world. God wants your mind to be like his. And the only way your mind is going to be like his. If you make a decision. To surrender your will to him. When you begin to be obedient to God's word. Everything in the Bible becomes real to you. In fact, even if you are a baby Christian and you haven't been saved longer what than a month, the more obedient to God's word you are, the more this world is going to hate you. Remember what Jesus said? Jesus said that if the world hated him, it's going to hate you too. Because if the world loved him, they would love us too. If the world received his word, they would receive our word, our word too. OK, what's going on today is if you're a Christian, especially today, and this was true in the past, too. But if you're a Christian and you are living for the Lord Jesus Christ, you can expect persecution. You can expect uh, uh, this world to think you're stupid, uneducated, dumb, think you should be hospitalized, think you should be going to jail, thrown into society. And eventually they're going to want to see you dead. That's where it's all leading. That's what it means to be. Um, to be faithful to Jesus Christ. We, we are to, we're called to deny ourselves, to pick up our cross, to follow Jesus Christ. 
We're called to deny ourselves. We're called to to not to love the things of this world, the the way that the, the way things are done in this world, the the world system. But we're called to love the people in this world. I don't care what they do to you. I don't call, I, I don't care if someone cusses you out. I don't care if they threaten your life. We are called to love them. Now, I'm not saying that you're supposed to write them love letters and whatnot, tell them how wonderful they are and whatnot. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the hunger, give them something to eat. If they're thirsty, give them something to drink. If they're naked, give them something to wear. That way, when they stand before Almighty God, what are they going to say to him? I mean, think about it. God lets the rain falls on the just and the unjust. God lets the sun shine on the just and the unjust. A lot of people in this world have a very bad view of God, but I'm going to tell you, when the, the more obedient you are to God's word, the more you begin to see things the way um, God does. All right. So. A lot of people are going to fall away from the faith, guys, because they love this world. They love. The fame. They love the riches. They love the technology of this world. They love these. They love family. They love all that stuff more than they love God. And they will let go of God. They will throw God to the curve. And they'll hold on to their computers and their CDs and their music. They hold on to their women and their fame and their fortune. There was a, a, a rich ruler that came to Jesus and asked Jesus, what can I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus told him to um, to uh, that he knows the law, to obey the law. And he said he did dumb things from his youth. And Jesus said, OK, if you want to be perfect, give away, give away everything that you have and come follow me. And the man went away with his head down, sorrowful because he had a lot of things. And the disciples, um, and the disciple says, um, no, 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 no. And then Jesus said in that situation, he said that, um, it is easier for a rich man to go through the eye of it, to, to, to go through the eye of a needle. And then it is, um, then no, I'm sorry. It, it is easy for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And then the disciple said, well, then who can be saved? And Jesus said, what is impossible for man is possible with God. Nothing is too hard for God. God can save anyone who's willing to surrender their will. And in that particular case, God wanted that man to give up everything that he had because he loved those things more than he loved God. God's not asking everybody to do the same thing. But God's going to ask you to give up something that you love, that you cherish, something that you don't want to let go if you want to have eternal life. And the most valuable thing that you have isn't what you own. It isn't your cars, it isn't your money, it isn't your 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 computer, it isn't your games, it isn't your rings, it isn't your gold, your silver. No, 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 no. God's going to ask you to give up you. God's going to want you to, to deny yourself and to follow him, to pick up your cross and to follow him. My friends, that's the truth. Because you can't be a disciple of Jesus Christ unless you're willing to deny this world. Unless you're willing to deny yourself. Not love the things of this world and to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you want to know who's a true Christian, all you got to do is find out who they love. Listen to what they say. Do they love the world or do they love God? You know, how many of you guys ever seen have, have ever heard that story of, uh, I believe it's Aladdin? I believe it's, or, or, or rather, how many of you have, have heard that story about um, about the kid? from Arabia who finds the, the, the lamp and there's a genie in it. And the genie acts, acts, um, acts, well, wants to grant him three wishes. And there's always, you know, I want to be a king or, you know, uh, uh, uh. they never ask for more wishes. And, and, in, and, and, and in recent movies, they tell you that you can't ask for more wishes. But let me ask you guys something. What will be more valuable to you? The three wishes or the genie? A lot of you, if you have any sense, are going to say the genie because the genie has the, the ability to give you anything that you ask for. Now, I don't look at God as a genie, but off the top of my head, that's the first example that happened to come to my mind. Um, I would rather have God than three wishes. 
if he can give me anything I want, I would still rather have God because I don't love this world the way I love God. Because God has done things for me that he is that, that this world is not going to do for me. And God is doing things for you, whether you recognize it or not, whether you are a Christian, a skeptic, an unbeliever, an atheist, whatever. God has done more for you than anyone has ever done for you in your entire life. And I don't care what example you give me. Oh, my mother did this for me. My friend did this for me. This group or an organization did this for me. Do you know who was working behind that organization? It was God. Because if God didn't allow that organization to exist, you wouldn't have what you have. This air that you're breathing is from God. What do you count more valuable than air? You can go several days without food. You can go weeks without food. You can go a week without water. But this air, you can only go a few minutes without it before you're dead. And you know who supplied and you want to know who supplied you with that air? It is Almighty God, the same God that many of you mock, that many of you ridicule, say doesn't exist. I mean, can you imagine if God was petty like us? Like we were as people, you know, the, the Suzuki dies talks about how God is childish sometimes, how he's immature and how he needs to grow up. If God was really like that, God would take away your air, Suzuki dies, and you would not be able to breathe. Mr. Gunny Kinky disrespects God all the time on his channel. He has a video up on his channel called um, God is Satan. Utter blasphemy. I, don't, I can't tell you how many times I thought about making a video. I mean, making a video response to that and, uh, and utterly just dealing with Mr. Good and Kinky once and for all. But I choose not to because if I pick that video, then I got to pick the rest of them too. And I'm not going there. Can't tell you how many times I, 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 I run into one of these videos on Bionic Dance, Griffin, or anybody for that matter. I'm, I'm getting hip to these new atheists like Atheist Hub, the Atheist Debate, and, and so many of these other people who got so many disrespectful things to say about a God who allows them to live. And is giving you a second chance. And is allowing you to turn from your sins and you choose not to. And then you, you moping, and you cry about hell. <laughs> Why did God create a hell? I just want to live in sin. God doesn't want you to live in sin. And if you keep doing it, you are going to end up in hell. Grow up. Accept responsibility for your life. It is punishment. Just like if you go or if I go into Walmart and I shoot somebody there and I rob the place, I'm going to be thrown into jail. For burglary and murder if the person should die when I shoot them. And I can get 45 to 50 life. Can, I, I can get 100 consecutive life sentences depending on the severity of what I did in Walmart. And how many people I killed. And what state I live in. Or what country I'm living in. Now some of you are saying, well, jail is temporary. Hell is eternal. Well, when you die, you're going to an eternal place in which you never die. So it's a life sentence when you sin against God. Some of you are saying that God throws you into hell because you break because you sin one time. You deserve hell when you sin one time. But Almighty God gives you chance after chance after chance after chance after chance after chance so that you could turn from your sins. What are you doing with that opportunity? Furthermore, if you don't believe any of this, why are you making videos about it? My God, there are there's like a ton of issues out there that you guys could be talking about. And you're talking about Christianity, how we're evil, how God doesn't exist. And you're just trying everything you can. And some of those videos, guys, I got to tell you, are just straight desperate. Listen to me. I can put, as a matter of fact, I might entertain doing this. I might put a 13-year-old here who knows Jesus Christ that understands this Bible better than most of you atheists that will put you in your place on how silly some of those videos are. You have no idea how much we're laughing at those videos and being angry at the same time. Especially that video that one YouTube user made called How Many God Has Killed. That was just completely hilarious. And and and, and my thing watching that kind of stuff is like, even if he did, it's, you're his property. He owns you. You are made out of his materials. The Bible says that God formed man out of the dust of the ground. Who created the dust? God created the dust. Therefore, he has the right to do what he wants with his, with his um, creation. You are the clay and he is the potter. The clay does not have the right to go to the potter and say, why did you make me like this? Who do you think you are?
You're a sinner. Turn from your sins. Come to Jesus Christ. Why you still have time and why you still have hope? Stop loving this world. This world will not listen to me. What is the point if you gain the whole entire world and you lose your own soul? Your immortal soul. The most precious thing that you own. Satan wants it. And for many of you, he has your soul. And the funny thing about it is, he's in the background laughing at you because you don't even believe that he exists. And he has your soul. And, he, and he's making you and he's molding you and, and, and causing you to be just as rebellious as he is. And he's getting you to do it by loving this world. Oh, I love, I love technology. I love science. I can't live without my technology. And some of you are going to say, oh, he's using a laptop. You know, why is he talking about technology? I don't, I, I, I use his laptop to glorify God. 98% of the time I use this laptop to glorify God. Okay. 98% of the time I use this to glorify God. If God wanted me to throw this thing out the window tomorrow, if he told me in my head to throw this out the window tomorrow, I would do it. Because he would have to confirm some things, but I would do it. There's been plenty of times I've, I've owned things, uh, expensive things, but God asked me to give it to somebody who didn't, who, who, who had need, and I just gave it to them. And I'm not doing that to toot my own horn or nothing like that, but just to show you the level of obedience that, that, that I've shown. My devotion, my loyalty, you know, Whenever I visit one of these churches out here, if it be a Pentecostal church, Lutheran church, Baptist church, or whatever church it is, and I go visit these churches, and, and they start boasting about their particular denomination, and they'll come to me and say, well, how do you feel about the Pentecostals? How do you feel about this? How do you feel about that? I say, well, my loyalty is to Jesus Christ. My loyalty is to Jesus Christ. I don't get into this denominational war. I think it's ridiculous what I hear Baptists saying about Pentecostals, what Pentecostals are saying about Baptists, what Calvinists are saying about Lutherans, and what Lutherans are saying about Cal Calvinists. I don't got no time for that. That is immaturity. Jesus died for my sins. He is the one I'm following. And I'm going to do what he commands me to do. And you atheists out there who like to spit on Jesus, ridicule him, call him immature, petty, call him a control freak. Say that is, oh, it's all your fault, God. I want you guys to think about something. When you guys going, God, is all your fault. There's sin in the world. If you wouldn't have put that tree in the garden, in the garden of Eden, you know, um, there would be no sin in the world. God's looking back at you and says, you know what? You know, Eve told me the same thing. Eve said, the serpent that you created gave me the fruit and I did eat. Adam looked at God and said, and, and, and said God, the woman that you, that, the, the woman, the, the, the woman that, that, that you brought to me, the woman that you brought to me gave me the fruit and I did eat. Everybody's blaming God. <laughs> Therefore, we have a, 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 a fallen world. Utter ridiculousness. You know, God put that tree in the middle of that garden as a test to show that Adam and Eve love God. And they love and, 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 and every day they decided to obey God. They proved that they love God. Jesus said, if you love me, you will do what I say. And Jesus is telling you today that if you love me, obey my commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. When the Holy Spirit came upon John, he's telling you not to love this world, not to love the system. Don't love welfare. Don't love Social Security. Don't love the government systems. Don't love any of those things. Rather, oppose those things. Stand on, stand with the things of God. And, we, and, and, and brothers and sisters in Christ, we know what God is commanding us to do. We know what he's commanding us to do. Okay? We are to share our faith with boldness. We are to love our neighbor. Don't do harm to your neighbor. Guys, I know they're cursing you out. I know they're calling you names, calling you stupid. Absorb it. Pray for them. Correct them in love. And then and then go to um the Lord Jesus Christ in, pr in, 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 in prayer and pray for these people because they need it. Because one day, it could be today, they could die and find out that absent from the body, present with the Lord, and after the death is the judgment. I know I kind of ran it off the topic yet again, guys. But um, just want to remind you guys not to love this world. A lot of people are leaving Jesus Christ because of love of, because they love this world. They love the things of this world. They don't want to let go of their music. They don't want to let go of their games. They don't want to let go of their cars and their jewelry. They don't want to let go of them things. And I'm not saying by any means to give it to anybody. When the time comes, you'll know what I mean. 
by not loving those things, not putting those things above God. He comes before anything. So, guys, I hope you you guys are blessed by this um, teaching slash rant <laughs> on not loving the world. And uh, and until next time, guys, this has been another edition of Preaching to the Choir Ministries. Read your Bible and do what it says. <laughs>